when a colony of army ants goes to war against a rainforest crab. It's massed might versus heavy armor. If you're a rainforest bug, few sights are more terrifying than a colony of army ants on the march. There may be as many as a quarter million ants swarming through the forest. Animals are rushing to get away from them. They're killing anything that they can get. These army ants have a really potent stink. Voracious, all-consuming, the army ants form a fast-flowing tide of death. There is no escaping the wholesale slaughter. These army ant swarms, when they go out, are wiping out the invertebrates and, and maybe even small vertebrates in an area that is the size of, as big as 10 bowling lanes within a day. It's amazing. Every army ant is equipped for war with weapons front and rear. A needle-sharp sting stabs repeatedly injecting paralyzing toxins. Sharp serrated mandibles cut and crush. Individually, they are formidable fighters. Working together, they're more than a match for much larger prey. A seething mass swarms over the victim, delivering death by a thousand cuts. With each battle won, fresh meat is ferried back to the nest. They've got this huge colony, and a queen who may be laying 50,000 eggs a day. Ants are going out in foraging swarms, collecting live prey, which they tear apart and then carry back to feed to these carnivorous larvae. If the army ants are ferocious foot soldiers, then this creature must be straight from the tank division. This is a Costa Rican land crab. And although he has to return to the sea to reproduce, he and his relatives can be found as far as 10 miles from the coast and even 1,500 feet above sea level. Now, that's what I call a well-traveled species. Well-traveled and well-protected. The crab's body and spiked legs are covered by a suit of armor made from chitin fibers, as flexible as human-made plastic, but reinforced with rock-hard mineral crystals. This is a tough little creature. He's got eight walking legs with sharp, hardened tips, a heavily armored body that's really difficult to penetrate, and a set of pinchers that can really inflict some damage on a pesky predator. Massive bulging pincers are a surefire deterrent to would-be predators. The claws are used for digging, as well as manipulating food and tearing it apart. The mouth parts are very adept at cutting, but they're not used as a weapon. That's left to the pinchers and the spiky feet. When the rainforest crab ventures into enemy territory, Hardened killers beat a hasty retreat, not willing to risk a run-in with those crushing claws. This foray in the leaf litter will put it in the path of an oncoming storm, the army ant swarm. But what happens when the tank on legs clashes with a rampaging infantry regiment. Next, monster claws versus murderous mandibles. Then, the ancient slime sprayer meets the impaler. And later, ultraviolence in the rainforest.
A hungry rainforest crab prowls for food in the leaf litter. Not far away, a ravenous tide of army ants is on the warpath. The army ants attack with savage mandibles and stings full of paralyzing toxin. The rainforest crab relies on heavy-duty armor and massive claws. Who will emerge victorious? Army ants really don't care how big the prey is. They're basically willing to take anything that they can bring down. And this is because they have an awful lot of hungry mouths to feed back at the colony. When the ants make contact, the crab's first instinct is to cut and run. Seeing a swarm of army ants approach must be a terrifying sight. He'd be feeling like he's surrounded by a horde of serial killers armed with machetes and dart guns. The crab's getaway isn't quick enough. More warriors enter the combat, biting the crab's exposed eyes, looking for a way past the armor to the sweet flesh beneath. Once these army ants have breached the shell, they're able to open this crab up and get the meat out. Overturned and overrun, the crab claws at its attackers. But against such small enemies, those huge pincers are clumsy and ineffective. The army ants concentrate on joints in the crab's shell. The tiny gaps between armor plates are wide enough for probing stings and cutting mandibles. This isn't just a bunch of itches that can be scratched. It's bite after bite, sting after sting, just hammering away and draining the crab's life force. Toxins flood the crab's body, shutting it down. As the crab takes its last breaths, the ants start to dismantle their fallen foe. When you're attacked by an army as fierce as this, there's no such thing as impenetrable armor. They just keep attacking until there's nothing left to do but just give up and die. In the callous bug world, it's always an eye for an eye. To the victor go the spoils, and the vanquished becomes a shell of its former self.